Hey everyone, Brady from Texture Labs here, and today I'm going to run through a quick tutorial on three essential tools for using textures in Photoshop. So I'm going to show you the basic tools to create things like this, or this, or this, or this, or this, or this. So this is a great place to start if you're just getting started with Photoshop, but it's also going to make a nice primer for some of the techniques in our other tutorials that'll get used over and over again. So we'll check out a technique for getting textures to live inside of your logos or typography. Then we'll check out how to use texture to distress or create worn away areas. And finally, we'll check out one of the hidden gems in Photoshop that is the essential tool for putting things over a textured background. Well, that's all coming up. Let's get started. All right, I'm going to start with a new document here, and I'll work at a resolution of 3840 by 2160 pixels, or 4K. Fairly large, but as we move into the future, I think it's important to get used to working in the highest resolution you can manage. And I'll just start with a background color of black and create. And the first thing I'll do is get some type in here. I'm pressing T for my type tool, and I'm going to click on this little color tab here and set the color to white then click in the middle and get some type going. This is a font called Phosphate, and I'll link to that below. Command return to exit my type tool, and that came in really small, so I'll size it up with Command T for transform. Then I can just drag the corners or hold Option to scale symmetrically, and something about like that looks good. Return, and if you had your logo with a transparent background on this layer instead of text, all these techniques we're going to get into work just the same. But technique number one for working with texture, and that is to create a clipping mask. So I'll start by opening a texture that I like, Texture Labs Concrete 124, and I want to copy it into my document. So Command A to select all, Command C to copy, then Command W to close that one, and Command V to paste it on top here. So I'm going to show you how to create a clipping mask, and then we'll take a look at what it's doing. I'll move my cursor over to the Layers tab here, and hovering in between the Type layer and Texture layer, I'm going to hold Option. And you'll see my cursor becomes this little arrow icon. I'll Option click right there between the layers. And that created a clipping mask, which is just a name for this group of layers. Quick note, it doesn't commit to anything permanently. I can just as easily Option click again to drop the clipping mask or put something right back in. I'm actually going to do a quick levels adjustment on this concrete texture with Command L and give it a little more contrast by bringing up the black level and bringing the white level down, something like that for the midpoint, just to give it a bit more contrast so we can see the effect more clearly. But you can probably see what it does. Anytime layers are put into a clipping mask, this bottommost layer defines the visible boundaries of everything on top, which means you can kind of stack anything to live inside of this bottom layer. And with this texture selected, I can even use my Move tool or Transform with Command-T, and I can move the texture around wherever I like, and it all remains within the shape of that bottom text layer. I can also just keep adding things into a clipping mask. So if I opened up another texture, like this Grunge 130, and copy that, then I can paste it on top and Option-click to include it in the clipping mask, and now that also lives inside of the letters. I can change blending modes. All these layers work just like they normally do. They're just bound by this bottom layer. And that really is the basis of the clipping mask. I would say a lot of the time it's the first and maybe the only tool you need when you're trying to make text or a logo look like it's made out of something. So if you want text or a logo made out of wood or metal or concrete, a lot of the time it's as simple as just getting a texture into a clipping mask. But what if I want to subtract some areas of this typography and create some worn away grunge or texture that you can see through to the background? Well, that brings us to essential tool number two, Photoshop masks. I'm going to turn off these layers in the clipping mask and we'll just pretend those don't exist for now and look at masks. And I'll get a background in here so we have something to work against. I'm going to open this Metal 237 and make a copy of that, close it, and paste it here on bottom. Maybe scale that down a little bit. Then if I select my text layer, I can create a mask by clicking on this little rectangle with the circle icon, the Create Mask button. And it created a mask and attached a little thumbnail for it to my layer. A layer mask is a way of telling Photoshop where you want transparency in your layer. White values in a mask represent fully opaque or solid pixels, and black values would be transparent. So if I were to take my paintbrush and set it to black, I could just start to paint in any areas where I want transparency. 
And this is great if you want to hide big sections of a layer. It's a much better technique than using something like the eraser tool, which would actually just delete parts of a layer. The nice thing about masks is that you can just as easily switch back to painting white and add those areas right back in. Now, at any time, if you want to see the mask you've created or edit it directly, you can option click on the mask thumbnail and it'll give you a direct view of the mask. And here you can edit the mask, paint it, or even apply filters, and all of that will be reflected in the mask. But I want to show you something really cool you can do with masks, and that is you can paste textures and things right into a layer mask. Let me show you what happens if I take a texture like this Grunge 156, and I'll select all and copy that, close it, and back in my main document, I'll option click to edit the mask directly, and Command V, paste it right into the mask. Now, I'm going to transform to scale that down and into the document boundaries here. When you paste something into a mask, Photoshop likes to delete anything outside of the frame. So I'll scale it down to be about the size of my type, something like that. And if I click back into the main layer, it's fairly subtle what that did, but it did start to create some nice transparent areas looking more like the layer has been kind of worn away. And if I want to create a more severe effect, I just need more black in the mask or more contrast. So if I do a levels adjustment on the layer with Command L, then I can drag up the black level to crush the blacks in the mask, creating more transparent areas, maybe bring in more whites for more solid areas, and drag around the midpoint to get a good balance between the two, and OK. So now you can really see through those weathered areas. One quick thing to note about masks is that they are only interested in black and white or grayscale values. So even if I were to copy in a color image like I'll grab this wood 124. If I copy that, then as soon as I paste it into the mask, it gets converted to grayscale. The mask only cares about light and dark values, which translate to opaque or transparent. And I'll just undo a few steps to get that wood out of there. But that's the mask, really, really useful, and maybe the most commonly used technique to distress type or logos, create kind of that vintage or worn away look. So we did clipping masks regular masks, and there's one more tool we're going to check out, which is a bit more hidden in Photoshop, but in my opinion, maybe the most useful of all three. If you're enjoying this tutorial so far, please do hit that like button and be sure to subscribe. In the next tutorial, we're going to check out how to build this chiseled stone look, and there's some really cool stuff going on in here. All right, back in my document for the last piece of the puzzle, Photoshop's Blend If options. Let me right click and I can disable this layer mask for now. and. I want to access this layer's blending options. I can do that by right clicking on it and it's this option all the way at the top or under my effects tab it's also the first option listed here. So I'll open blending options and I'm focusing on this section down here, blend if. This is such a great tool it really deserves better placement in Photoshop but I'm going to move this bottom slider around and see if you can get a sense of what it's doing. The black level slider here is telling the layer to be transparent anytime the layers below it are darker than this value. And the white level slider is going to do the opposite. It says anywhere the layers below are lighter than this value, make the layer transparent. And yeah, right out of the box that looks pretty crunchy and not very useful, but within this already kind of hidden tool is yet another sneaky hidden option that you really need to make it work. If I hold the Option key and drag one of these sliders, well, the slider splits in half. And when I drag them apart, then it starts to create a nice smooth transition from transparent to opaque areas. Just about any time you're using Blend If, you'll probably end up doing this Option drag as well. So Blend If is really allowing you to kind of pick up the shading of the layers below and apply them to the current layer, a lot like what a coat of paint on a bumpy surface would do in real life. And I would say this is the tool to use if you're trying to get your text or your logo onto something. So whether it's a fabric or wood background or even to trying to get something to look like it's painted on the side of a building, Blend If is a good place to start. And I will quickly note this slider on top that says this layer, which will create transparency based on the light or dark values of the current layer. Because my layer is solid white text, it's not going to do much for me other than immediately make the layer transparent as soon as I go anywhere below white. But this can come in really handy in other circumstances, so be sure to experiment with it when you have different values in your layer. 
So that is Photoshop's blend if options. Now, when you've got all three of these techniques in your tool belt, you can start to use combinations of them or experiment to really carve out a specific look. So this is looking like white paint on a metal surface. I could right click and enable this mask again to bring back in those worn away areas the mask was creating. Maybe I wanna use a levels adjustment on the mask and I'll adjust it just to leave the black areas that are creating those scratches. Then I could turn back on that very first texture in the clipping mask and that'll bring some color and kind of some content into the letters. Maybe I'll put a levels adjustment on the very top of my layer stack here and bring out some contrast across the entire image to finish it off. And there you go. Clipping mask to get a little bit of color and paint into the letters, layer mask to create the transparent worn away areas, and blend if to get it to blend with that metal background. I will admit that I think using all three of these at the same time is kind of putting a hat on top of a hat on top of a hat, but all these techniques come in really handy. It just depends on what you're going for. And a nice bonus is that none of these techniques are destructive to your original layer. So I can still change fonts or even retype things in my type layer here. And that is it. The mask, the clipping mask, and blend if. I hope all three of these tools find a place in your arsenal and help to open up the possibilities of what you can do with textures in Photoshop. Check out texturelabs.org for a huge library of textures you can do just this kind of thing with. And please do give us a like, a subscribe, or leave comments and questions below. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.